Hello. Yeah, hi Prithvi, finally you're back. Finally, finally. <laughs> I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much for waiting. Sorry about it. I guess there is some technical glitch at my end. I had to change my laptop and now it's working fine. Okay, okay. No issues, no issues. Uh, so, you, without further ado, we should start, begin the session. Yes, please. And I formally welcome you on behalf of Professor Satiki Roy and design program IIT Kanpur. Satiki okay. sir is not here right now. He will be joining us shortly. Okay, sure. sure. Yeah, and in between. So let's, looking forward to your presentation then, Prithvi. Okay. Sure, thank you. You want me to take over? Yeah. Cool. You see my screen? Yes, Prithvi. Yes. Okay. okay. So uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me for uh, this uh, talk in Satiki sir's course. And um, I would like to thank Satiki sir, Mithinjai, and uh, the whole team who has uh, coordinated this. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to share my experiences with my um, uh, own college, uh, right? And uh, Welcome to all the students uh, who are here and all the participants who are a part of this, uh, right? Um, so uh, I am Prithviraj. Uh, I work as a lead experience designer at uh, Siemens R&D uh, Corporate Technology, uh, user experience design team in India. I am in Bangalore right now. I've been working with Siemens for around four years, uh, right after my uh, master's from IIT Kanpur. So uh, I passed out of IIT Kanpur in 2016 and um, uh, I happened to be, be the gold medalist. I'll also mention why um, I mentioned that uh, specifically uh, because that is something um, which the college itself provides an opportunity to, uh, a lot of opportunity to work and then rewards, right? So that, that is something uh, which I wanted to uh, keep you posted about. So uh, today, uh, what we'll be seeing is a bit about design. Um, uh, my journey, specific journey within Kanpur uh, in my uh, uh, education in Master of Design course, and also how did I come to design? And at the same time, uh, where am I and what am I going towards? And there is a reason for me to uh, uh, title this presentation as ever-evolving designer and design, right? So. Uh, the design as a field is, has been evolving uh, from uh, the day. I'll, I'll also give you a definition of what I mean here by design uh, in the upcoming slide. And uh, with evolution of design, uh, the one who is trying to enable a user through this design uh, has, has to evolve as well. Otherwise, eventually we become redundant. So that is the theme I'm looking at. Um, I'll also share a bit about my industrial experience. And uh, finally, we'll have a few questions and answers as well. I guess so if if i start with design broadly right so i would i would define design as something that you start with an intention you want to do something for someone that creates a particular impact right uh, it is absolutely uh, necessary to have an intention when it comes to design or in other words i can say it's it's a corollary that um, if you have an intent you end up eventually designing Something that you are doing without an intent, just as an expression, becomes art. Right? And uh, when you have an intent uh, and you are taking up uh, further uh, steps to research a bit, try to understand, and you have a focus and you are redirecting your energies towards achieving something for a particular target, that becomes design eventually. And it can be, uh, it can also be a uh, uh, direction of music, right? Music direction is also design in one sense. You can call it art, but at the end of the day, you are designing it for a particular uh, uh, visual on the screen for the audience. And you have an intention of uh, bringing out a particular emotion in the audience whenever you show this particular picture along with the music, right? So it is proper design activity. Uh, so that that is my perspective of design. And uh, uh, from my uh, discussion with uh, Nitinjay, and I understand the participants are uh, the first year students. And uh, from that perspective, this uh, uh, I would be showing you an overview of my work. I wouldn't go into the details because I consider the discussion on the overview is much more important at this point in time. Uh, but you would definitely get a, a perspective of uh, what is happening in the industry at a high level. And at the same time, what you need to keep in mind when you move forward. Right. So uh, with that, 
I'll talk about uh, a specific example. Right? When I say uh, uh, evolving design, I wanted to give a specific example of evolution of communication. Right? So uh, communication right from the beginning has been evolving in various forms. Uh, as you can see in the image, uh, the first form of communication, uh, of course, there was verbal communication or, or making sounds, uh, drawing things on caves and stuff. There were various other forms of communication. The example that here is showing is an early period of communication where signaling is happening. Right? Like you are signaling that you are located at a particular place by uh, lighting fire and the smoke becomes a signal that your location uh, so that uh, the others who are far away are, understand, are able to recognize your location at that point in time. That is one form of communication at that era. Later, uh, it eventually slowly evolved into uh, something uh, that you can train and send messages. Right? Uh, for example, these uh, message carrying uh, doves or birds. Right? So what did you do? Um, you eventually, the, uh, the uh, people at that point in time uh, were able to understand that uh, they have now one more means of transmitting information because uh, by training a particular bird, they are able to uh, send that bird from point A to point B, and they want to now reach out quickly, fastly. So how can I send some information there? By then, of course, there are media of uh, written format uh, that has evolved. There is language. That is the reason even if when you send, send by writing or when you send something by symbols to the other person, the person is able to understand that common language. So there is an evolution. Unlike the previous case where there is just the use of natural forces, or, or, uh, it is a bit lesser primitive, right? Like more primitive at that point in time. So uh, the communication at this point has evolved. Now, uh, the use of this communication, who would use it and how they would use it also would have evolved. Similarly, eventually, if we fast forward, uh, we also see here the evolution of internet, where we are much more connected now and we have quite a few options uh, to do that. And the indication here is just to show that it's a wired uh, uh, internet. And a couple, uh, like a few decades back, this uh, this was the case, right? You had to be wired. and uh, But at the same time, you had uh, quite a few possibilities for you to transfer information. The fourth one uh, is a wireless uh, transmission of information, which makes you uh, move around and trans transmit information. Now, the possibilities here are like you can, of course, always the physical communication was there, but the mobile uh, form of communication also got uh, expanded, which means I can keep, I can be on the move and I can communicate with someone uh, personally while I uh, directly communicate with someone online, right? So there are there is there is a huge change in the ecosystem and people who have access to this totally uh, is a paradigm shift uh, in terms of how uh, the communication overall happens across the stakeholders when uh, when such technologies are democratized further that is what happens here right like there are uh, multiple types of devices and each device is now intelligent enough to capture information and showcase it to you and there are various other medias like uh, as simple as WhatsApp to um, compli uh, complex uh, documentation and uh, uh, discussion forums like Slack. And yes, there are enterprise applications and beyond. Right? What I'm trying to say here is, uh, as technologies have evolved, um, we have, as designers or people who have designed this, have kept in mind how the human ecosystem would function using these technologies. And accordingly, you align it. Right? So users and ecosystems are evolving. And whoever is using this ecosystem to make that better in terms of consumption for other set of users is eventually termed as a designer, right? Which means there is a necessity for designers to evolve as well. And uh, today, it could be a particular technology in a particular context. But tomorrow, it can be different. And as a designer, it is necessary for one to keep track of things. But the interesting part is the underlying principle remains the same. Right? Uh, humans uh, with, this, uh, with a particular set of goals and uh, have uh, priorities and they have they are emotional uh, in terms of a uh, set of context. Uh, they do have uh, uh, a particular set of uh, capabilities in terms of which they can evolve with time due by training. So how would you use all these aspects of human uh, uh, 
evolution, right? Uh, to make sure that the technology is of ideal use. So that, that keeps increasing and uh, the challenges keep increasing as the scale also keeps increasing. So one person using WhatsApp is one uh, idea and one possibility. But if there are hundreds using it, how would that communication change? Do you want to make it a group discussion or various other things, right? So that ways it, it is a continuous evolution. So having said that, um, uh, so the, the point I wanted to make here was designers have to evolve. Now, uh, I would also like to bring in a, a short story about my journey, right? How did I get into design? And uh, it's an interesting journey, and I'm sure many of you share a similar path of a zigzag path before arriving at design and that to it. Uh, IIT Kanpur, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, it's a campus that gives you amazing freedom to explore. And uh, I'll show you a couple of examples of my journey and what I could do at the campus. So uh, my uh, journey started really early in terms of uh, my interest with drawing. So uh, I uh, it was found that uh, whenever something was drawn, I used to draw the surrounding aspects. For example, someone draws fish and I draw water because uh, that, uh, that that was my logic at that point in time that uh, a fish couldn't survive without water. So my my thinking process was exhibited through visual uh, visuals and I was naturally inclined towards it, right? And it, it, it so became that uh, I started drawing everywhere and it, I became a troublesome kid uh, because uh, if someone steps in on my drawings, uh, it's a gone case. I'll, I'll make a huge ruckus. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, eventually, I used to draw everywhere on the floor and things got difficult. So eventually, uh, the solution that came up, uh, which, uh, which I, uh, I highly appreciate at this age, is that uh, one of the walls uh, at my home was painted black uh, and it was made to be a blackboard for me. And uh, that was the kind of support and encouragement that uh, was there for me since my childhood. And uh, eventually, since I got this blackboard now dedicated for me, they expected that um, all the drawings from the floors would go away. But uh, uh, eventually, I was able, since that gave me a better perspective of zoom out and zoom in and think uh, better in terms of visuals, I made better drawings, not simple, small scribblings. And uh, surprisingly, it turns out that my grandpa was super impressed and uh, he started uh, uh, doing um, uh, prayers and puja to that. And even after years of me uh, coming away from that place, that was there as, uh, as it is. So eventually, what happened? I, I got back to the floor when I was there at that point in time. So this was uh, this was when I was in a particular town uh, near Madurai, uh, and uh, uh, the reason I'm giving you this story is uh, as I evolved, right? Like um, I, even at that point in time, in my second or third grade, uh, there were things which, as a, as a as an artist or uh, as a self-taught person, there I was always curious to understand what people were using and why they were using and is there a possibility for me to improve as simple uh, uh, things like um, uh, i think people from south uh, might recognize this uh, uh, most of the villages carry a bag which is yellow in color it's a cloth bag um, in tamil they call it manjapai right uh, so that bag is like a universal bag across in that in in, in some cultures um, even if you want to carry vegetables it is the one which is used even if you want to carry uh, uh, like a hefty amount, maybe 30,000 or so, all the notes are stacked inside it, rolled properly and put under the dhoti. And uh, that's how they used to take it. So uh, that used to be a universal container for various contexts, but it used to have a very thin uh, cloth handle, right? So uh, as, as a kid, I used to be intrigued on why are they making uh, something so thin and stuff like that. The reason I'm bringing this as an example is there is an innate nature in uh, in in all of us to critique something to see why things are the way they are and uh, imagine possibilities of improving right that is the uh, basic underlying nature of what a designer is and i personally consider that everyone is a designer but it it depends on how we nurture it and in which domain we nurture it and it so happened that uh, uh, we are all in the same uh, very dedicated uh, well recognized field as of now in terms of experience design right and it can be product digital anything but uh, what i would like to bring forth is uh, we all have that curiosity and our responsibility is, is to nurture it further right 
and also i also used to observe uh, things like these palm fans uh, which were gifted in villages whenever you go for a marriage or stuff and literally it was it used to be a branch of a palm tree leaf and uh, and and it used to have wedge shaped uh, handle ergonomically difficult i used to grip about it in my second grade and stuff even going to a, a tractor that you make using a matchstick and a, a bit of clay right eventually we have all designed and played at various points in time and uh, uh, the means are changing now the technology and the tools that we have are changing now but we are designers uh, innately and uh, we should be uh, happy to uh, uh, add more inputs to that quality of ours and i think uh, a college great college like uh, iit kanpur would definitely enable us uh, in enable you guys in in terms of uh, bringing out and nurturing that quality right. so uh, what happened next i i had to make a decision and uh, two major choices in front of me i was not aware of design so arts was one choice and electronics was another why electronics i loved electronics and the Uh, electronic chips they looked like a, a, a zoomed out city view from top view and hence i had that fascination also to code and uh, game and stuff like that so uh, it didn't feel logical for me who was passionate from childhood to go into arts and learn learn four years of art because i thought i'll do it myself uh, and electronics was the choice because i didn't know design at that point in time so but i did well there as well like uh, uh, and eventually after i passed out i joined as a, as a software developer i couldn't get uh, into electronics at that point in time it was a small recession hit after 2008 again i passed out in 2012 at that point in time right and that is when i was doing well there as well but one of my friends suggested there that i could get into c uh, and iit uh, i thought that might be super challenging um it was a very tough decision for me to make leaving a job and trying things out because i had um, a road map ahead which could pay me but um, i if i take a decision like this it, it could have been really challenging but i had to take the risk at that point in time because i was super passionate and uh, i would like to bring one thing to notice here um, uh, there is nothing in life called a settling uh, but that doesn't mean you have to be restless all the time so uh, the reason i bring this point here is uh, from childhood they say you pass 10th you are settled 12th you are settled and engineering you are settled and you you get a job you are settled but eventually after i got a job i understood that there is no definition for settlement and uh, so i had it i had to make my own choice uh, now and prioritize so i started uh, putting all my effort after my job into art and eventually i stumbled upon seed right that uh, that uh it turned out to be really uh, good for me i i cracked uh, seed and i was able to get into uh, iit kanpur uh, and uh, of course uh, iit kanpur means for me the first thing that comes to my mind here is peacocks and the airstrip and um, where uh, we have an opportunity to fly hopefully you guys get get an opportunity to uh, get a pilot license there was some program at that point i'm not sure if that's there still now um so uh, uh i did a quite a few things i'll show you a few details there and i happened to pass out as um, um all round uh, performer best performer uh, um, getting the shankar dayal sharma award and uh, the reason i mentioned this is uh, i am extremely thankful uh, to the uh, college for first of all giving us all the opportunity to explore and at the same time uh, uh, recognizing that uh, in terms of uh, Uh, the performance right so uh, uh the the all round exposure that that you get from uh, our university is amazing and uh, be it after your uh, your educational hours um, there are so many activities that you can take a part of and i would absolutely urge you guys to uh, utilize it there are sometimes lectures by nobel laureates and there are people from different streams coming and giving speeches and uh, cultural programs happening all around and it's not just education all the time right it's it's amazing fun to be with so many departments there are interdisciplinary programs here right uh, that way is it is a great opportunity for you guys um, i hope the situation gets better and you guys are in campus soon uh, but otherwise i think uh, the college would definitely enable uh, you guys in many ways to make sure that you are better engaged and uh, um, uh, benefited from the facilities available So I also happened to uh, win the uh, Imprint India National Logo Design Competition. Um, 
I was invited to the Rashtrapati Bhavan uh, for the launch. Uh, uh, the one surprising thing and one uh, very uh, uh, satisfying thing for me here is uh, Dr. Uday Kumar sir, who is the rupee symbol designer, he used to come uh, to conduct workshops, uh, visual, uh, uh, the typography workshops for us. And uh, eventually it happened that, happened to be that uh, after the results were announced, uh, 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 I found out that he happened to be one of the panel members of uh, this, and that, that meant a huge deal for me. And these are all coming from learnings from our college, right? Like, uh, I was good at art, I was good at drawing um, when I was in my uh, electronics uh, uh, course, uh, but then uh, I probably lacked the skill to polish and present it in a, in a way that can uh, solve a purpose. But uh, after the first year of my college, I was able to uh, achieve a feat which I could never imagine that I could have done uh, two years before joining the college. Right? So that was the possibility for me. Uh, one day I'm in IIT campus, the other day uh, 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 I'm, in, I'm in Delhi in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. That was surreal and uh, I am extremely grateful for that uh, knowledge and experience that the college has given me to be able to do that. Now, as uh, Siemens R&D, uh, uh, in Siemens R&D, uh, I work as a data search engineer and I work in a couple of uh, uh, business units. I'll go into detail uh, in a bit here. So that's broadly about my journey, right? Um, I'm sure, uh, so uh, now now getting into the some, some aspect of design, right? Like uh, getting into slightly a transition of, of what uh, the process in terms of design is the reason I'm bringing this up uh, with a with with something missing on the top and the bottom is uh, there is something you will learn uh, in terms of uh, very strong uh, processes and knowledge and practical aspects uh, in college and uh, whatever uh, the learnings are when you when you are in a particular context those learnings are to be uh, let us say appended with a bit more of work that you do need to do in a particular organization. What are those? Um, that is these uh, uh, dash, uh, dash, dashes on, on the top and the bottom. I'll give you an overview a bit later. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the, uh, the basics, uh, definitely uh, we get it extremely strong there. And uh, we are, uh, I think uh, our college makes sure that you get that information. In addition to that, uh, there is also industrial experiences that are provided in our college uh, from by our professors and uh, some of the internship experiences that you get. Um, and uh, what I would be adding is my personal experience. I'm sure I have seen uh, some of our previous speakers giving uh, great tips and information in terms of how their organization works. Interestingly, each organization has its own um, uh, criteria sometimes and its own priorities in what the scope of a UX designer who is working there uh, is. So I would be sharing my journey and my experience on what I, I have uh, learned uh, from my industry in addition to what I have learned from the college. So that is that is what uh, the uh, top and the bottom differences that I'm showing here. So uh, 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 so uh, as I as I uh, come there, right? Like uh, since I am taking you into a journey uh, where uh, from where I uh, I'm showing the differences in the design processes. I also wanted to take you through some of the uh, outcomes and possibilities of what you can do with the design knowledge uh, and in the process of learning design knowledge within the uh, within the university. Right. Uh, by that I mean uh, uh, there was a challenge for me as a student at that point in time to understand what kind of projects can I do when when I am in my college. Uh, then also this challenge for me to understand what would I do when I go to the industry. Right. Unlike uh, some uh, some of the fields, uh, for example, some of the engineering that uh, uh, courses that we do, and we end up in another uh, software job, eventually not using our skills. Uh, unlike that, uh, the design skills that we use are amazingly strong here in our college. That we learn here are amazingly strong, and eventually they would be useful. Um, uh, but at the same time, since you are very early in your uh, educational uh, uh, journey within the campus. So I wanted to also give you a glimpse of what kind of things can be done uh, within the campus so that at least for the, uh, there is some idea of what are possible. But the, uh, consider this as a small sample because uh, uh, your creativity and your uh, inputs from the other talks would also would have given you great directions. 
So uh, take this as a small input from my end, right? Uh, so uh, this this one is a is a is a career awareness uh, project that I did. Uh, since I had like I like I showed you, I had a zigzag path, right? Uh, in terms of career, um, eventually there were a couple more um, classmates of mine who had um, a similar uh, zigzag path uh, from computer science design. Um, uh, from uh, architecture to uh, a particular job and then to design, right? So uh, that uh, we uh, had resonated about it and then uh, we came across a, a project. Uh, finally, uh, that ended up uh, creating an end-to-end -end prototype of uh, career awareness card. So this involved uh, considerable uh, work in terms of uh, uh, reaching out to uh, students there uh, within Kanpur, outside in terms of schools, and then taking forward and finally um, uh, throwing out quite a few ideations and finally coming up with a particular card design. This uh, this is a set of uh, 52 cards. Each card has around one to uh, around uh, four carriers. So that, that way you can around uh, approximately learn uh, more than 120 carriers uh, uh, about uh, an introduction about 120 carriers. And we gamified it in such a way that children talk about it and learn about it. So that way, uh, there was a, a, a very good opportunity to, for, uh, for us to test and see how things would work. Um, and uh, eventually, we were able to test uh, these cards. And uh, uh, we have also uh, happened, uh, we have copyrighted this. And uh, we plan to probably take it forward a bit later. And uh, the, the other one is uh, uh, what I have also done during my, uh, uh, right from my software job till now, I have been uh, continuously working with the visually challenged community. Um, by that, I mean, like when I was in Chennai, I used to visit the, uh, visit, uh, the uh, library, blind library there and uh, talk to uh, people there. When I was in Kanpur, I used to go to blind schools and uh, uh, to find out speci uh, specific challenges and come out, come back and take them up as my semester projects. And uh, I was really fortunate at that point in time. Uh, like uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys also would get amazing opportunities like this, that professors encouraged us to choose projects that were uh, um, of our interest. So uh, do you want to do something for the community or do you want to do from a technological perspective? All these questions would be asked. And uh, eventually, uh, uh, I uh, one of the projects that I did, I chose to do this. And uh, I uh, worked with them in terms of uh, generating design solutions, uh, both from a digital perspective or even um, design board games for visually challenged kids to play with, to be able to play with partially visually challenged kids and uh, sighted kids as well. Uh, without any bias or without any uh, advantage for the sighted kids. So that kind of uh, design thinking perspective that we brought in. So it uh, was all from uh, from the possibility of looking at it from a user's standpoint with, with the knowledge that we have gained, right? Um, in case, if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free to type it. And uh, um, Jay, I cannot see myself for the comments. So in case if there are questions coming up and if they are relevant to what I'm discussing, if I would, I would probably request you to please share it with me. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Sure. And uh, yes, this, I have already mentioned this. Uh, um, uh, this is a logo that I designed for Imprint India. I uh, was invited to the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And uh, for the launch of the India, uh, Imprint India program in the presence of uh, the three dignitaries, right? The uh, Prime Minister Modi, President Pranam Mukherjee, and uh, uh, MHRD Minister, then MHRD Minister Smithy Um So uh, uh, what I also want to bring here is uh, the possibilities of what our college offers, right? Uh, both in terms of skills and guidance. So it is, it is for you to choose uh, where you want to uh, take it. And uh, I have seen uh, 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 my seniors and my classmates and uh, even my super seniors and some of my juniors uh, do extraordinary amazing amazing job in terms of focusing their efforts and priorities on what they like. So some have won international awards in uh, uh, product design, some have uh, uh, done extraordinarily well in movie making, and um, while well, some are more focused in UX, right? So uh, 
though uh, there is this is a master of design course that uh, that uh, that flexibility in terms of where you want to focus uh, is definitely there and you can try out and choose it there is no um, uh, uh, there is no rigidity here and design as a field is so good in terms of allowing you to be flexible that uh, uh, even though you choose one direction in the beginning uh, it is eventually possible for you to jump to another so that freedom is definitely there and our college definitely encourages that in, in many ways so i would like you to urge you to use those things right so that is uh, an overview of what i could do in college uh, in case if you have any questions or if you want to uh, know further about uh, any other things i can definitely share my contact with uh, mitunjay and uh, uh, i'm also there in the dp group so you guys can reach out to me and i'll be very glad to help and um, some of uh, the uh, dp uh, students have also joined as a interns and uh, i do get quite a few careers uh, career queries in terms of what next that happens uh, the field is dynamic and is evolving and in case if you have questions you can reach out to me regarding that just to give you a, a, an overview about my industrial experience right now after masters uh, i uh, joined siemens as a research engineer so that's a technical term for a ux designer uh, within siemens um, i'll give you a, an overview of what uh, the structure of siemens is uh, different organizations have different structure even in within siemens there are different teams um, uh, just to help you understand we are a part of a central research and development team uh, so siemens has a central research and development team and uh, there are many verticals or business units uh, where siemens operates for example power generation is a separate uh, domain itself like where manufacturing of gas turbines is a huge uh, um, area where siemens uh, was working in and, and uh, power services is something uh, uh, solutions that are available for the power generation aspects like you have sold some gas turbines to your customer how do you service it is all modeled around power services and that is the scope of power services smart infrastructure takes care of the various infrastructure aspects uh, when it comes to smart cities and uh, uh, topics related to that healthcare um, uh, was involved uh, siemens had a huge um, array of products and solutions in healthcare and eventually some of these segments have been carved out into individual entities and that happened recently uh, but i am i am i am listing them here in terms of my experiences with siemens so uh, we as a central team sometimes had, had the opportunity to work with those separate entities before they were carved out and even now so uh, that's why you ha you have a mix of them here so as a central r and d team uh, 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 there are multiple groups inside r and d and i am a part of the user experience design india group uh, by that uh, i mean uh, there are other groups which are focusing on artificial intelligence in terms of electrical and electronics and various other uh, digital twin and various other topics so uh, those are all r and d teams to which these all business units and uh, offerings come to for cutting edge innovations in the respective fields from a user experience design field uh, we uh, bring in that um uh, experience in terms of uh, um, applied research that uh, wherever there is cutting edge work going on or uh, taking the academic research and ever evolving uh, it into uh, apply applicable solution in the industry is, is of scope in addition to that r and d part there is a huge part of uh, our work in terms of delivering uh, solutions right from scratch by understanding the requirements with the customers defining the vision design strategy and uh, um, ideating taking it further and uh, finally delivering solutions and also supporting in terms of development so these both functions exist for us as a part of r and d team both uh, r and d aspects and business projects both exist hope that gives you guys a bit clarity i uh, work with a lot of designers uh, uh, we have around 18 people now and uh, uh, which includes designers cognitive neuroscientists anthropologists and uh, requirements engineering right like um, i have had the opportunity to work with uh, these diverse group of people and uh, that has literally changed my perspective of how i look at design um, sometimes we go very deep into cognitive neuroscience to validate some of these designs using uh, let us say quantitative or qualitative measures quantitative sometimes being eye tracking in scenarios like this 
uh, when it comes to anthropology, our experts bring in their uh, cultural aspects and also how humans process information. Uh, so it's it's a very collaborative work that we do, and uh, um, uh, it's uh, it it has a startup environment in our team. Uh, we uh, we happen to be a very dynamic uh, kind of an internal startup. It's an entrepreneurial uh, work that we do. So that is an overview. Uh, I might not be able to go into the details of this because those are confidential and at the same time probably it would be too early for you to understand but I have a summary um, uh, of uh, kind of uh, things that you would need to learn as as along with the design process. Right? So this is a small overview of uh, some of uh, the uh, research topics that I have worked with and I have been uh, keenly focused in terms of extended reality. That is UX, user experience and user interface design for extended reality in Siemens context. Um, as a designer, I, I definitely had ma uh, made sure and I make sure that uh, these topics don't go towards fancy implementations of these technologies, but rather real utility and uh, value adding technologies for Siemens context. So that is definitely a part of my responsibility as well. Right. Um, uh, the uh, the way it works, uh, just to give you an overview of how the industrial R&D at Siemens here is working, um, we define a particular topic uh, that is, let us say, if I take UX for XR, right? Extended reality being AR, MR, and VR. Um, probably since some of you are new to this, I'll give you a set of definitions of what this is. So augmented reality basically is augmenting or adding digital information uh, to uh, the real world through any device that you see through. It could be a tablet, it could be a mobile phone, or it could be any head-mounted device, right? Uh, when I say added, it need not be uh, related with respect to the real world, which means, let us say I'm wearing a headset, like you would have seen examples like in Iron Man. Uh, the battery information might always move along with me. It need not be fixed to something in front of me. So when things are moving along uh, with me that you call it added and it's augmented but when it is uh, when it is able to kind of correlate with the real world in other words interact with the real world and um, so let us say for example you uh, project a screen and the screen always is in, in a particular place and when you move your head away the screen doesn't come with you but is is mixed with the real world you call it mixed reality and virtual reality is something which really literally cuts you off from uh, the whole uh, real world experience and you are totally in a virtual world you have no clue of uh, your surroundings when the experience in virtual world happens right so there are different applications for this vr is uh, majorly used in training because you need not move much and it is better for you to be immersively um, experienced trainings as scenarios MR is uh, much more favored now because uh, it allows you to use the real world and at the same time, this digital information. AR is useful in a specific cases as well. Right? Uh, with that overview, um, uh, for Siemens, uh, what I have uh, been doing is uh, specific topics that can be used in terms of uh, bringing in XR from the stage that it is available in. Uh, to uh, implement it in scenarios like in oil rig scenarios and building technology scenarios to be able to control equipment and to be able to monitor. So uh, it also involves quite a bit of interaction design here. So which modality to use for it? when I say modality, it could be gesture, right? Or it could be voice or it could be a particular interaction that this device enables you to do. Right? So uh, when I say define here, I, I make sure I get in touch with the business units and at the same time understand the business requirements at that point in time for Siemens and I, uh, uh, I choose a topic. Right? Like sometimes it is the team, sometimes it is individually defining the topic and forming a team together. So uh, when I choose a topic, I, uh, it, is, it has to be aligned to the business so that eventually within a couple of months or a year, uh, it has to be applied to business. Um, then of course validation with the business units happen and uh, uh, when uh, once that is validated and there is underst it's understood that it would add value eventually if we come up with things, we ideate and come up with the typical process of design, um, go through the ideal journeys, um, uh, deep dive into the use case, find out the gaps and stuff, and finally develop a proof of concept. This proof of concept can be an MVP sometimes. Uh, when I say MVP, it's a minimum viable product, which means it is ready to go with all the technologies uh, in it, but it is the minimum most viable in terms of money, right? 
Um, but proof of, proof of concept can be an example. It need not have all the technologies integrated. It can just show how things would work. Okay. So that kind of um, um, discussions uh, with those things, we again go back to businesses and see use cases and pitch it and get it done. Uh, get it converted into business. So the business should agree that, yes, this is useful. And uh, uh, then we look for a use case where it can be used and eventually take it further. So to, uh, to that that is a typical uh, additional process in terms of R&D. And for that, you need to have some business considerations. And interestingly, um, as a designer, the challenge and the fun part is uh, that you get to work in multiple businesses, uh, business domains. And uh, you have to have that uh, grasp of that business domain by uh, reading uh, further, by researching further about that domain and also generate that business languages. These are these are some components that are a part of those missing, or let us say the appended things that you need to add to the design process right, eventually, which are uh, there in our projects. But when it comes to business, there is, there is a, an additional requirement to have uh, an understanding of how what the priorities of each of the businesses with which we are working. Some of the outcomes of uh, these activities are uh, of such patents or publications. Uh, so we have been able to publish things in CHI and HCI International. And I have also been able to give a talk on challenges of uh, adapting extended reality uh, products into industrial scenarios. So um, that way, is these research outcomes are also available. For, some of them are available for community. Some of them are patented for further use. And industrial patents, in some cases, uh, differ how, how you would define an industrial patent according to organization to organization. In, in our case, a patent is granted only when a business unit is interested in taking it further. If it is not, then it becomes some publication or it is uh, part, right? So uh, so when, when patents are granted, it's another validation that business needs it with, uh, soon, very soon. Right? So that is uh, one way of validation loop and definitely uh, when, it, when it comes to validation loop i would like to bring this point up for your notice unlike our typical uh, um, um, processes where there are users available for us in abundance when it comes to industries for project to project things change and it, it, it is quite challenging in some context for us to get direct um, access to users and you have to use secondary uh, research methods or uh, talk to experts to bring that information out. That is one keen uh, uh, difference or uh, like core difference when it comes to working in industries and working in our projects when we are learning. So, uh, so uh, it's just to give you an input in terms of how prepared you can be for that so that you can be, be aware that there are alternative ways of looking at uh, research other than always uh, having users available and uh, you should figure out ways to handle it and it, it varies from context to context you would eventually experience it when you go to the industry and uh, there is another research topic this is a quick overview uh, so similar uh, to this process i apply the uh, uh, approach for these research topics as well there are a few other uh, uh, research topics which uh, i work on but I think I have given you an overview of how things work in the industry. Right? Um, so uh, this this is an example. Uh, these images are available in public already on LinkedIn, and hence I have the opportunity to show those to you. Um, so uh, we have been working in a project called Dubai Expo 2020, which happens to be one of the biggest expos uh, over a thousand acre uh, area in Dubai. and. Uh, Expo typically is a, is a place where all the countries come together and showcase the technological innovations that they have done. It's, it's an exhibition and uh, hence it is the Tech Expo. Um, so uh, we have been uh, uh, from Siemens side, we ha our team has been the team which has been designing user experience for this. And uh, there are a wide array of projects that, were, uh, that uh, we, uh, we have delivered. And I happen to be uh, um, a core contributor in uh, designing the experience for the mixed reality uh, for maintenance scenarios in, in the Dubai Expo scenario. So uh, since it is a, it's a project which is spanning across 1,000 acres, so how can a maintenance engineer and a maintenance supervisor be able to identify a flaw or a glitch uh, in a particular place in, in, in such a huge ecosystem when they are at a different location? and still be able to handle things. 
um so it was a very interesting challenge for us to uh, understand and definitely some of the research outcomes from the xr research that i did we had translated and we were able to pull this off um so what you see here is uh, the uh, ipad uh, mixed reality application which uh, the head of expo uh, uh, from siemens side uh, like uh, uh, is uh, they they are trying to experience so here you see one of the key stakeholders trying to uh, visualize the mixed reality app using ipad and he's able to interact with it right so uh, this uh, the next phases of this is in progress and uh, uh, we are trying to make sure that uh, the experiences are uh, delivering the customer expectations so this is one such example of the various things that we do um, yeah um, so back to the process right like now i showed you a previously an example of this particular design process um which is a typical uh, uh, process but at the same time i also mentioned that uh, there are some gaps that that do exist uh, from that standpoint uh, having given you an overview of the industrial considerations that uh, that i have gone through and this is a small summary of what additional uh, uh needs or additional pointers that we need to keep in mind when we are going to an industry or how an industry expects a designers uh designers acumen and uh, uh knowledge also to be centered towards so in addition to the strong base that we build and also looking at the uh users requirements uh, uh there is a difference in what we call a custom customer and a user i will probably define the term for you guys first so that at high level you will be able to understand right let us say um, you are um, uh, a typical example can be um, uh, um, let us say uh, you are buying a 3d printer for your organization right uh, 3d printer is a device that can print 3d objects for you when you in a protection super model you could be uh, the manager of the organization and you buy the 3d printer but you might not be the user of the 3d printer it could be one of your subordinates who is using it day in and day out to get some things printed out right which means uh, you since you purchased it are the customer and the guy who is using it to print things is the user right so uh, when it comes to business uh, the customer has a vision and uh, for which he is buying some uh, some equipment or some tool or some service uh you need to make sure that uh, the customers goals and needs are also handled well and satisfactorily delivered along with making sure that the users goals and needs are also handled like if any of these are a mismatch there are enough competitors out there to uh, to out out run you right so that is the whole point in terms of customer centricity we are looking at user centered where we are talking about uh, um looking at uh what the user needs what are his pain points is it easily understandable is is the interface good enough or is the experience in a proper workflow are all the needs and the pain points of the users uh, taken care of yes that is absolutely needed and at the same time add one more layer to it eventually to understand the customer requirements at, at large and uh, how that would eventually impact both the user users expectations for his goals and uh, customers expectations in the long term goals right so that is customer centricity you also have customer in the center right business understanding uh, is is a, is kind of related to customer centricity because when you uh, are customer centered you are looking at what are the goals of uh, the customer what are the needs of the customer is he trying to expand the business is, does he want things to be printed fast like just taking the same continuing the same example of 3d printer uh does he want it to be printed fast or uh, what are his priorities uh, in terms of business and why would he want to buy something from us so are we satisfying his goals and at the same time satisfying the end user's goals and after uh, a business understanding you uh, eventually when you when you soak yourself in that domain of work, where the customer is working you would gain domain knowledge but you should also put extra effort deliberately to gain that knowledge uh and uh, for example just to give you my scenario right i worked in power generation and uh, uh, power services segment i never heard of this uh, of these terminologies uh, uh, earlier neither uh, uh, have i 
detailedly analyzed uh, gas turbine, right? So it's all about uh, the power services project was about monitoring the health of a gas turbine, being able to predict the uh, performance and see if there could be any errors. Can I mitigate a few errors? There is uh, FME analysis. So there are all these technical terms. So for me to first of all understand and cater to the customer centric requirements, it was necessary for me to grab and uh, grasp a bit of domain knowledge. Similar is the case, like let us say I, I work in power segment uh, this year, next year it could be building technologies. So uh, that uh, that part is something that really uh, fascinates me. Uh, that is, as a designer, I'm able to touch multiple domains, but at the same time to do justice to the customer, I need to make sure that I educate myself, even if I like the domain or I don't, don't like the domain, right? Sometimes you might be uh, ending up in a too technical thing. You cannot shrug off and say that uh, it is, I'm a designer, uh, technical is not my responsibility. As a designer, the responsibility is to be able to solve the problem and uh, goal oriented in terms of taking the customer on the other end by bringing together the needs, uh, uh, the feasibility and the viability, right? Like I think that is typical, but as, as uh, from an attitude standpoint, we need to be pretty flexible. And that is when things are, uh, uh, much more comfortable in terms of delivering the ideal experiences. Um, with uh, gaining domain knowledge comes domain language. Like when you converse with the customer, it is easy for you to quickly understand and talk about it things. And uh, project management that you would learn in the job as a part of the job because you are working with a couple of team members with developers and also uh, trying to understand how the effectively you can uh, organize things for for you to see, track the progress sometimes tracking progress in in a typical setup is um, we when we are working as individuals it seems easy but when you're working as uh, as a team uh, it's it's very important to make sure that all all responsibilities are moving forward in in the expected timeline right um, stakeholder management is a part of project management, like you make sure you communicate properly, you set the expectations right and uh, 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 give all the necessary information to the necessary stakeholders so that there is no confusion. Um, you might have a great team, but if the communication is, uh, uh, is a mismatch, then uh, the outcome might get hit, right? So that is where the whole point is. Collaborate and delegate. A very <laughs> very, very important point, I would say, because um, sometimes uh, we might be really good at something or uh, we might consider ourselves to be really good at something. And um, it is easy for us to very quickly move forward as an individual, uh, because uh, to run quickly, it is easy as an individual. But to run long, you have to run together as a team. And uh, uh, in design, it is, it is given that multiple minds give great outcomes and uh, you have to collaborate to uh, to ideally satisfy your best design uh, outcome uh, not looking at a personal uh, a benefit uh, further also look at delegation right sometimes we we might want to take all the work or or, or it sometimes is challenging for us to be able to delegate some things to some of the colleagues because um, uh, we we consider that it can be done so that planning and time management in terms of collaboration and being able to delegate and bring things together is one key aspect uh, that you would need to know when you're working with a couple of other designers and stakeholders. So these would be those points at a high level from my experience, I would suggest you can keep in mind. You would learn all this uh, and these could vary from organization to organization. So, uh, but yeah, I hope these points would help eventually. Uh, there are two small points which I would like to cover and summarize. I'll close quickly. Um, um, I would say respect. Um, so I interpret respect a bit differently. Um, why is respect important in design? So um, if it had been a conversational discussion, uh, Mrithuja, I wanted to check if, the, if they can talk or is it only a chat possibility in such a case? Uh, Prithvi, this is Murli from Media Technology Center. Amrutunjay yes. is not here. He's okay. had some class at seven. Uh, okay. Students can post their questions in chat as well as they can uh, orally also convey. Sure, sure. Right. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so I would, I would uh, probably in that case, students, I would like to check with you what is your definition of respect, right? Um, 
you can feel free to answer it in your in your own comfortable way uh, probably i'll give you a couple uh, one or two minutes to for each of you to answer so you can voice out unmute yourself and voice out your answers yeah hello yes hi so this is shri kritika um, so uh, what i feel is respect is even if we disagree on some points with some other people we have to listen them out and at least uh, consider their points of view makes sense i agree i agree with the second of yes yes agree yes any more views guys feel free to answer there is no right or wrong answer this is a discussion so feel free to bring in your perspectives okay so in the interest of time probably i'll uh, i'll consider that that is one answer i get i get and i think uh, uh, you were you were pretty close uh, in this case so um, in this case i i personally divide the word uh, into respect like respect is like watching right the spectacles and you are able to see uh, as a spectator or you are able to see right uh, uh, so respect is re look at the uh, at the topic or at the person of or at the user or the customer uh, you have to keep re looking at at them to understand how their priorities and how their um, uh, needs are changing with time Uh, because as you design uh, there are competitors coming up with products or there are technological solutions pushing boundaries and some of your um, uh, solutions can be enhanced much or their the uses of the need uh, the needs of the users are also getting uh, evolved right if it's a long term project so uh, from that perspective i would uh, i i term this as respect uh, right you you have to look back and make sure you are continuously in loop with the user uh, so uh considering the users or the customer needs and priorities and uh, user centered design uh, definitely says that but when when sometimes in the industry uh, because of lack of users uh, you might have to move on but uh, as designers it is your responsibility to make sure and push that uh, we have to keep them in loop and in other words uh, uh, respecting uh, the the desires and the needs of the users and the customer group that we are looking at right so that is how i uh, personally split a respect as similarly i would like to bring in one more uh, terminology and break it uh, break it out um so uh, here uh, basically uh, just in the interest of time let me define it myself um so if if we look at uh, the term enjoy uh, we typically have the understanding that uh, 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 when we go through an experience uh, uh, whether did we enjoy it or not right enjoyment is basically an outcome uh, that is how we have used the term enjoy so far right uh, uh, eventually uh, based on a bit of uh, uh, analysis or my my interpretation here i i define enjoy as something that you do not that comes out uh, from something else right so uh, if you look at enable the word enable you are uh, enabling someone to do something to be able to do something so it's an external act like or an act of yours to enable someone similarly the word endanger right if a species is endangered uh, it has not become endangered by itself as humans or as 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 human beings we have somehow pushed it to uh, close to ex- extinction uh, by either killing them or uh re- destroying their habitat and so they become endangered so they are in danger and we have enabled or added it or progressed uh, accelerated its uh, danger uh, dangerous uh, to a dangerous stage right so whenever there is an end it is it is an addition from as as from an effort perspective so when i say enjoy uh, you have to add joy it's it's uh, unlike the perspective that you went to a movie and you came out enjoying which is a result of something happening uh, when you are working you should add joy to your work and how, how is that you you love the work you do right there would be many parts uh, in in your work that you don't want to do there might be specific parts which are priorities and by default when they come you are happy but 
if you go by that approach it would be very challenging as a designer because uh, it becomes very tricky to have something so well defined for you carved out so in any journey uh, uh, be it in life or in, in any other journey be it, uh, even out of design you would have to do many things that uh, you don't like or you would have to learn and cope up with things so you add your joy there uh, rather than expecting uh, some happiness to come out from it right so that ways uh, i would i would highly encourage you guys to uh, look at different domains keep an open mind uh, try to understand what are the various things out there don't just uh, restrict yourself because you are a product designer or because you are ux designer and my boundaries are supposed to be here that uh, that boundaries will eventually get erased in future because the things are moving at a very high pace but uh, don't take that as a uh, threat or a uh, scenario it's is an opportunity actually for you to uh, for you to bring in more knowledge and look at uh, uh, making design a broader area for you to explore right my enjoyment of course uh, this this is something that i do to inspire myself uh, comes from some of my uh, sketches and from my childhood since i have been doing and that is something where i found find uh, joy in uh, and i i translate this joy i push this joy into my work eventually so my my visual thinking eventually comes out there so uh, i i experiment a lot and uh, try to do things for example here i'm painting here along um, along with the musical performance from my team so that that you see at the background is a painting live painting finger painting that i have been doing so i i try to bring in different things and see uh, where where can there be uh, experiments done and that is how i, I push for for that right so these uh, this is this is uh, broadly uh, my journey and uh, i'd be really happy to answer any of your questions now excellent sir yes so actually the question is bit of like very general uh, mm -hmm. like no uh, we have been at like end of one semester or out of four but mm -hmm. when like uh, somebody is asking like what are you studying so what should be the correct answer like i i am not still able to explain some people who are not in design like what is design right i understand i understand now uh, first of all i'd like to understand have you chosen a specialization uh, in in a masters here in kanpur no sir not yet so uh, you're broadly doing master of design right yes sir okay and so may i know your name nikhilesh tripathi okay nikhilesh sir sure. that is a common dilemma nikhilesh and i, I can empathize with you it happens uh, and uh, in any conversation whenever you bring a term uh, people are going to uh, recollect things from their memory so if you say a designer it could be a costume designer or something or you would definitely have to explain it in many cases right um, having said that uh, uh, so you can definitely put it in terms of examples right like it could be very contextual on who who you are talking to if it's if you are if it's a close friend of yours and you take examples of uh, what you know are their experiences and connect the dots on what a typical designer does that is uh, solve a problem by bringing together technologies and uh, core uh, look, looking at uh, uh, the uh, uh, needs at that point in time right it's a very generic uh, definition and uh, i definitely do not have a right uh, right away answer because i can give you a typical definition of a designer but uh, would that be understandable to the person is totally on the context right so and uh, how would you uh, it may not be <laughs> right right so uh, it so typically uh, we even during my conversations with uh, various audiences i i take a couple of minutes to explain the type of work that i do and i can take examples of uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, interesting things out there for example i can bring in rupee symbol design right like that is accessible for everyone like no we know that there is a symbol for that now uh, as a common man that is easily understandable so if i want to say i am a visual communication designer or i am a graphic designer i can take an example of that and say uh, i i give examples or if if you want to say that i am a ux designer and if you give examples you can simply bring in examples of uh, 
um, i design apps uh, or digital experiences for apps if everyone who you are talking to you know that they are using apps like paytm or anything else you can say that i design the workflow for such products uh, uh, i i'm eventually going to design some, some things along those lines and when it comes to product design you can take uh, uh, similarly relevant examples of uh, some uh, good products which you feel that the, the person whom you are talking to is aware of so you are connecting the dots with their knowledge right you cannot bring in some random example and make uh, get get them to expect to understand but you should have some context of who you are talking to and what they can relate to from design so this is a broad input hope that helps yeah thank you very much <laughs> sure anyone else any other questions in terms of it can be very simple question guys don't uh, don't uh, get concerned it could be in terms of design or industry good evening sir yes good evening uh, i'm normal uh, and i would like to know that uh, i have my interest in this ar vr mr thing but mm-hmm. i'm not sure where, where i should you know start uh, what the, what are the resources that i should look up on or what are the industry standards softwares and all other things okay uh, is your name aman nirmal 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 yeah okay okay nirmal sure so uh, if i understand you right uh, you are looking for what are the industry softwares that you would want to use uh, to uh, learn or start up with start with the xr or ai vr technologies right yeah okay so uh, there are uh, so uh, of course the the way in which you can approach this is first of all uh, so you were you was your question is more a bit of technical and implementation standpoint in terms of software so i'll directly go there um if you want to use it uh, using mobile or uh, uh, and there are specific solutions for uh, ios and android uh, ar kit and ar core right and uh, uh, those are frameworks uh, uh, but at the same time if you want to look at uh, creating uh, games and uh, scenarios that way so you have unity 3d or you have unreal game engines so these are game engines that you can definitely use to cope up with uh, but yes there is there is sometimes a requirement of coding it's not all uh, simply drag and drop the, in some cases if you want to go into deeper experiences you will need to look into these things as well but uh, definitely these can be uh, good starting points and if you are focused on a particular device and thing um, i think you will be able to uh, figure that out by uh, searching that specific information but as a starting point you can go with these what is it this okay sir thank you sure no problem anyone else um so if there are no questions um hello prithvi yes yes i'm only here i just spoke with sir satiki sir sir is yes. still in the meeting so he will not be able to join this session okay okay sure no problem that uh, he'll be watching the recorded content definitely no problem and yeah right so it's a very good session hope our uh, students will benefit from it and sure there are uh, no questions then we can wind up yeah one question posted in chat oh, no no thank you for for the very informative presentation okay yeah sure wait for a minute if there are no questions then we will wind up prithvi understood thank yes thank no questions guys uh, then i think uh, you guys are uh, well and clear uh, with with the multiple sessions that you have already attended um, great uh, i'll definitely share my uh, contact number and details with anitin uh, jay and uh, uh, he can if if there is an internal group he can definitely post and you can definitely reach out to me individually as well for any other discussions uh, okay i see a question from saurabh bhattacharya programming language okay 
So, Saurabh, you can unmute yourself and probably ask about this. Yes, sir. Sir, actually, I am saying that uh, for uh, designing any kind of interface, uh, which uh, kind of language should I learn? Means, as I am from mechanical background, so I don't have a knowledge on programming languages. So, mm -hmm. which language should I learn? So, it depends on a couple of factors here. Uh, Sort of, uh, sort of right. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. So um, it depends on a couple of factors. Um, so if if it is a native app, uh, which means the app is supposed to be installed in a particular device, then accordingly uh, you have to uh, take into consideration the device uh, constraints. For example, when you go into Android devices, you will you will have to take the corresponding. Uh, 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 language and setup, um, or if it is an iOS app, then um, accordingly uh, you have to look into those uh, requirements. Sometimes there are there are a few set of new frameworks that are coming up that enable you to do both. Um, um, a generic example I can give you is uh, there are these uh, 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 let us say these hybrid apps uh, that you can design in one platform, but you can use it in multiple. Uh, it's it's more like a web a web app design, and you can use it across uh, multiple platforms. So uh, using responsive scenarios, you can scale it across. So uh, it it considerably depends on what you want to uh, do and uh, the performance, the cost, and the maintainability are are some of the factors that come into picture on how a business prioritizes it. Like. If you want to generally learn and code, you can go with the typical uh, resources that are available. Um, it, uh, for Android Studio, can be used for your coding or Visual Studio for set, setting and extract. Uh, but when it comes to an industry, there are some constraints like you should be able to use it across multiple platforms for a for a certain group of audiences in a particular region, and uh, it should be accessible across different sizes. So when when these constraints come into picture, there are a few other uh, pointers like which which uh, technology you want to bring in, uh, is it Angular JS or what what should be the uh, backend, how how things would work. All these complications would come in. So typically, you can start um, uh, looking at uh, um, uh, the device that you uh, prioritize and accordingly go with it. Second thing is uh, not every job. And in fact, majorly uh, in terms of when it comes to jobs, uh, uh, they might not expect you to code as a UX UI designer. You would, you can have a decent knowledge of how you would want to translate these designs into uh, these uh, platforms, so that when you are communicating or giving away the deliverables to the uh, developers, you have an understanding and you don't literally go off the chart without having an understanding of development. But otherwise, uh, generally, uh, in most of the teams, UX, UI is a separate uh, activity, and uh, uh, development is a separate activity by itself. But if you still are oriented, uh, it, it can be a good advantage if you want to be still oriented. Uh, for that, you, based on the device and preferences that you have now, you can go ahead with that. You can, um, uh, you can try to uh, search for it uh, based on your preference and choose, choose that. Does that help? Yes. Sir. Sure, sorry. Okay. Um, if uh, if there are no more questions, I, I see uh, no one has typed any input. So thank you a lot. Uh, uh, I, I thank personally Satikiri sir, Nitin Jai sir, and uh, uh, everyone who have participated uh, for. Uh, offering me this opportunity and um, hopefully uh, I'll, I'll definitely be in touch uh, with all of you guys and um, uh, we can have such interactions further again looking forward to see you guys in the industry all the all the very best for your next steps and you can reach me out um, uh, based on the contact i shared with nathunja anytime for any discussions yeah thank you prithvi thank you students we will close the session now thank you so much thank you. bye bye, -bye.